Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to continue to review the code of this app that I've created. Uh, it's not necessary to have seen past videos. We're, we're just kind of taking a tour of the functionality of this app, which is an app that is designed to demonstrate how to log in and sign up with various different third-party providers, as well as email and phone, etc. Uh, the GitHub repo is here. If you uh, put the link down below, if you want to go get it and actually have the code yourself, if you want to run it, there are some setup requirements here. You'll need to basically add a Firebase project to it and drop in the the Google Services JSON and and the Google Service Info P list. Um, those instructions are here. I'll also put a link to a video up above uh, where we wired those up in a past video. And in, in this video, I want to just draw some more attention onto this authentication process and look specifically at the Firebase auth functions that make authentication possible. So authentication is just verifying that that user is who they say they are. Um, and that may be done through Facebook or Twitter or Microsoft or any of these third-party providers you may wire into your app. They know their user database, they, they know your password, they take care of all of that for you. Works a little bit differently with something like email or phone authentication because Firebase is actually storing that information for you and they're taking on that role of verifying that the password and the email that you submit pat match a password and email combination that somebody submitted in the past and making the link that you are that person. That's the, the authentication that is going on. And from a code perspective, after we get past our form validation, there, there is some massaging and business logic that may take place uh, depending on the path that you're going down. So if it's Google, um, there may be a little bit more work uh, to, to do before you pass off to, to Firebase. Same with Facebook or a user email password type of combination. But once you get down to actually interacting with Firebase Auth, uh, the functions that you need to do that are actually pretty min minimal. And that's what I want to review today. So this may be review or just, uh, you know, something that's just not useful to, to some of you. And that's fine. Feel free to skip this video. Uh, but I do want to highlight a, a, a service for Firebase Auth. And so this application has quite a bit of logic here in the auth block for, okay, so verifying email and signing in with email somewhere in here. Yeah, sign up with email. So it's got a function here for that. But once it gets ready to actually talk with Firebase auth, it is going to call a service. So in my services folder, I have an auth service class, and this has all of my interactions with Firebase auth, except phone authentication. I did end up putting that in the block or the view model. Uh, it was a weird little animal and it just didn't fit well into this service. So it's it's not ideal architecturally, but it worked better that way. But what we have left here is just 24 lines of code that can handle everything else besides phone authentication. Uh, and that includes logging in through Google, Facebook, Apple, email, uh, not phone, uh, and then some of the, the support actions such as verifying email. So let's just look at this real quick. So we can see we've got a Firebase auth that we call an instance on. And this gives me a private auth variable that I can use throughout this class. It is private with an underscore because I don't want uh, other classes to be able to reach in here and use it. I want any interaction with that auth to be inside of this, this service. Blocks can call the sign up email and we'll handle it from there with our, our private variable. So we have this uh, auth.currentuser, which is great. It is not a stream. It's not a future. Anytime you want to get the current user, you can do that off of, off of auth.currentuser and you get it synchronously, which is nice. And so we just have a helper function here so that any part of the code, if it wants to get it, can call the authservice.user and get that. We do have a stream for current user, which is our auth.authstatechanges. So this is a stream that has a user object. And this is super handy for things like the login or the sign up page when the login and sign up is happening. And if it's successful, you can have a listener on this stream. And as soon as it sees a user object in that stream, it can send it onto the home page. 
You can have a similar listener on your home page that's listening for when this stream is null, and then it will send them back to the login page. So that's nice to have. For signing in or signing up with email, we have two functions here that call auth.createUser with email and password and auth.signIn with email and password. And both of those take an email and a password as their, their inputs. So this is this business of Firebase actually having to maintain that information for you. And so you need to let it know what password and email they submitted so they can match it against their database uh, and let you know if that was successful or not. So we do need two functions there. And then there's this, this huge heavy lifting function, which is sign in with credential. So we can see it's just the auth instance dot sign in with credential and then we pass it that credential and this is all we need to sign up or sign in with uh, Google Facebook Apple Microsoft github all of these different providers that are supported by Firebase there's going to be some work in our view model and our block where we we have to do some custom language for Facebook or Google to get it into this auth credential object but once we do all we have to do is pass this generic user credential. It's going to sign the user in or not sign the user in, depending on you know the response from uh, Firebase, and we go from there. So that is a function that does a huge amount of heavy lifting. And I think in the next video, we're gonna do Apple sign-in, and we're gonna actually utilize this code uh, to complete Apple sign-in. Then some nice helper functions. Of course, you need a way to sign out, and all you have to do is call auth.signout. Very easy. Verifying email, also easy. We do auth.currentuser.send email verification. That's it. It will send an email on your behalf. You can customize that here in the templates if you wish. So we've got email address verification, uh, password reset, etc. There is a template that gives you some control over what that looks like. Send reset password. Again, we just call auth.sendreset email password reset email and we pass in the email which we can get off of our current user dot email property so like i said that may be basic for many of you but before we dive into the auth block and start looking at some of the business logic to do the signing in uh through various platforms i did want to just highlight the code that is doing the heavy lifting here in the back end through the the auth service so I'll wrap this video up here and hopefully we will see you in a future video.